What is up guys, it is Tony here, and today we're doing an episode of Tony Talks. And today we're looking at some Skyrim gameplay. And the reason why we're looking at Skyrim is because, first off, I've been playing a ton of it. Because Elder Scrolls Online is coming out, and I'm really pumped for it. And, uh, yeah, we're also um, doing a Q&A session. Now, the reason why we're doing Q&A is because uh, on the, uh, the Q&A video I did with Nick, I didn't really get to answer a lot of extra questions, and I wanted to get to almost everyone's question if possible. But there's like 180 comments, I think, or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and try to answer as many as possible in this video. we got a nice long video. So uh, if you ask a question, stay tuned. If you want to learn more about me, stay tuned. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and start answering some of these questions. So uh, the first one, we're starting from the bottom, uh, is uh, by Cuddly Giraffe 19 And I think we answered his question already, so we're going to skip him. Sorry. Uh, what about Alex Stylish? Uh, what is your main goal on YouTube? And what are some changes that you might want to do to your channel? It's an interesting question. Uh, my main goal with YouTube is just to keep going. Um, like I always say to myself, I want to keep doing YouTube until I'm like, you know, like I'm a senior citizen. I want to be like 60 something and still doing YouTube. Uh, that's kind of difficult to do first off because, you know, maybe YouTube won't exist and most likely YouTube won't exist at that point. Um, in addition to that, I don't even know if the internet's going to be prevalent in, when I'm 60-something. But uh, it'd be really cool to keep uh, doing YouTube as long as possible until it ends. I want YouTube, I want Google to give up before I do, if that makes sense. That's my main goal with YouTube. Um, and just to have fun with it on the way. I don't want to ever force myself into something that uh, I don't enjoy doing or that I don't approve of um, with YouTube, if that makes sense. And what are some changes I might want to do to my channel? I already did a lot of changes to my channel, and I love what I did. I love the format. I love it. It's much more organized. It's a lot more fun to keep to a format. Um, but I guess in the future, I would like to do more short films, um, like more physical video films. I, I really like doing those. Uh, maybe a little bit less cheesy than the ones I've recently done. And I also want to go to more conventions. I really had a lot of fun covering PAX Prime, and I want to do more giveaways because I like giving back to the community. So I guess it's more of the same if you will. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Pachinchi? Sure. Pachinchi? Pachinchi. Sure. Uh, what are the things that impressed you guys most at PAX this year? I already did a video talking about this, but I would definitely say that, uh, well, obviously I mentioned this earlier, Elder Scrolls Online was really cool. I wasn't expecting it to be that, you know, interesting to me. Because really, to me, when I first heard about it, I was like, eh, who cares? But then I saw it being played, and I was like, you know what? I can get into this, because I really enjoyed Skyrim a lot. And just to see Skyrim online, I mean, it just looked awesome. Um, and in terms of, like, actually impressing me, I was really impressed by the performance of the Oculus Rift. I think it worked really well. I'm a little bit underwhelmed, though, because I had higher expectations. But I'm sure in the future, it'll be much better. Um, and otherwise, I guess I was kind of impressed at the amount of people there. I mean, it was just insane. When you walk down on the streets of the city, um, they were loaded with people, uh, wearing PAX badges. And it was just like, holy shit, this city is probably making a lot of money off of this. So that's kind of impressive, um, if you will. Uh, Rom Romos, Romosia, Eddie, I think we answered this. Yeah, I think we did. All right, sorry, buddy. I'm trying to not re-answer questions. Um, the Cry Krill? Krill? The Krill39 says, How old was you when you started YouTubing? What was your first video? What was your first goal with YouTube? From a Swedish sub. Yeah, Swedes. Swedes are awesome. I actually had a foreign exchange student who was Swedish who, uh, who I met in high school, and he was just a badass. He was, he was pretty cool. Um, but anyway, that's actually a place I want to move one day. It'd be cool to move there and live in, in Sweden. Uh, but anyway... How old was you, were you, I'll try to correct your English, uh, nothing wrong with, you probably speak 10 times better English than I could speak Swedish, that's what I always think about whenever someone speaks poor English, um, I can't even speak Swedish, I can't even begin to try, uh, how old were you when you started YouTubing, so I was, holy shit, I was probably about 13, 12 or 13, and I'm now about to turn 19 in December, so you get the point, I mean, it's been about 6 or 7 years, and, um, you know, I've had fun every, every single, every single day, uh, doing this. My first video was a review of the iPhone first gen, or was it? Was it the review of the iPhone first gen? I think it was the re a review of the first gen iPhone, or maybe it was, I'm trying to remember. Um, 
Yeah, I think it was a review of the first gen iPhone. It was on this channel called Mr. Mac Freak, which does not exist anymore. And it was basically just a uh, tech channel. And I was inspired by John for Lakers, if you know who that is, and some other guys. Well, actually, no, I don't even know if John for Lakers was around at the time, but he inspired me to keep going, I guess you can say. Uh, what was your first goal with YouTube? My first goal with YouTube was really just to be a YouTuber. I, I always saw YouTubers as these really cool guys who um, have just, you know, have a really good time making these videos. And I thought, hey, that looks fun. And I decided, you know, let's just be a YouTuber. And then I slowly realized this is a lot more work than I thought. And I did quit. I did quit for a bit. But then I started to come back. I did some gaming videos. And that's really where I had a lot of fun with it. Um, but it's still hard work, as usual. Um, hum, Hamaid Ali. I think I said that right. Uh, Hamaid, maybe? Okay. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong again. I think I said that already. Tell me about the project you were most proud of and what your con contribution was. Now, when you say project you're most proud of, I'm guessing on YouTube. And the project I'm most, I was most proud of, like in my YouTube career that I jumped up and down was so excited about, is probably going to be editing related. And I think it was, well, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do a double on time. I'm going to do, first off, Strive. If you guys remember, a while ago, I'm probably going to upload some old montages soon. There was this video I did, this edit I did called Strive, and it was an entry for Supra's editing contest. At the time, I was a very uh, younger editor who didn't really have as much talent as I do now, if you can call it talent. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing. But I made this edit, and I put so much time into it, so much effort into it, and it came out so good, and I uploaded it, and Supra decided to give me an honorable mention, quote-unquote, and give me fifth place in their contest. And I believe... They essentially were saying to me, you can join Supra if you want. And the idea of being able to join a team that had like, I think, 20-something K at the time uh, was huge because I had like maybe 500 subscribers. And it was just really amazing that I was able to achieve that. And I was really proud of that project. Um, as far as uh, other projects, because um, you, you say your contribution to the project, I think more of a better answer to your question would be Editor Arena. Um, Editor Arena was a really cool project idea that I had where two editors uh, face off. They could be, you know, random people who have no following or people with big followings. And uh, they face off in an arena, quote unquote, where they edit the same clips with the same song, I believe. Yeah, I think it was the same song. And we see whose editing is better. And it was really awesome. I really liked the way it worked. I liked the, uh, the videos we had turned in. And I think that it was a really cool idea that... Unfortunately, couldn't have been executed, but I was really proud of it while it lasted, and I still think it was an awesome idea, and that it could have went far, but it was very difficult to manage that channel. But anyway, uh, next question. Um, okay, so we're, we are Hog Rider five three one six seven says, "Why did you start making videos?" I already went over that, but then he says, uh, "Did you ever think you would get this popular?" Which we haven't answered yet. Um, honestly, like there was a time where. I didn't care about popularity, and even today, it's it's very infrequent that I'm going, you know, insane about how popular I am. It was only recently that I realized how crazy this is getting in terms of popularity, like 10k subs and 8 mil views. Um, but I really never thought about how popular this can get. That wasn't really my main concern starting out. But I had a feeling that, you know, anything could happen. I, I'm always optimistic about things like this. And it was really only a year ago that I realized that I had the potential to become somewhat uh, popular on YouTube because I hit 1K subs and I saw, like, some exponential growth going on. Uh, I mean, you, you'll probably be asking me the same question in a year from now. And, you know, wh what do I expect from a year from now? Really, I don't know. Anything could happen. That's always been my policy. I never try to predict the future. Um, but, yeah, that's that's... Pretty much my answer, I guess. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? I'm trying to find a question I haven't really already answered yet. A little bit more of a better question. Uh, why? What? Oh, so someone asked, why are you doing this giveaway? Well, I'm doing this giveaway, which is the PC giveaway, I guess uh, you're referring to. And uh, I think it's her. Is it a her? Mattia Della Mina. It might be a, it might be a her, it might be a guy. I'm not sure. Sorry, I can't see your picture on here. Um, but I'm doing this giveaway because 
Um, I have made money from YouTube and I've used some of it towards going to conventions. I've used some of it towards, um, that's pretty much it towards. Yeah. Pretty much towards going to a convention, which gives back to the channel. And I'm doing this giveaway to give back to the channel. I feel like the majority of this money should in some capacity go back to the channel, to the, to the subscribers, because they pretty much are, uh, you guys pretty much are the driving force that makes this all happen. If it wasn't for you guys watching the videos, I wouldn't make any of this money. Uh, second off, I just feel like it'll be beneficial to both of us because it'll allow me to make a video where I'm building a computer and I could show you guys how to build a computer. Um, and at the same time, I'm also helping out someone out there, uh, you know, who needs a computer potentially. So I just feel like it's a win-win for everyone and it's a lot of fun. I have fun giving, giving people, uh, you know, prizes. I have fun doing that. It's always been, uh, one of my favorite things to do. I mean, I, I don't know if I ever told you stories about when I was younger, when I was younger, I used to like run like carnivals and I used to do um, like, you know, street side stands and things like that. And I used to just give away free stuff at the carnival, not really caring, even though I was losing money because um, it was fun. I, I don't know. I, I just think it's fun to see the excitement in a person's face and uh, when that happens. And I really hope that whoever wins does a video. That'd be really cool to see a video from someone um, reacting and opening up it and setting it up and all that stuff. So hopefully that happens. Um... Let's see here. Any other good questions? Uh, main goal of your channel. I think I've already said that in the past. Just, you know, it's pretty general. Just uh, keep going. Keep it keep it as live as, as long as possible. Um, when did you get into PC? I think I already answered that. It was probably... I mainly got into PC gaming probably like 10 years ago. And it was through like, you know, Age of Empires and SimCity and... Roller Coaster Tycoon, all those types of games. I really like those um, games where you kind of build up an empire, build up a, a place, if you will. Um, someone said, Tony, you are the best. I'm not sure how that's a question, but sure. Okay. Uh, what's your most favorite build you have ever done? I, I guess he's just saying those build videos. I'm not sure. Those build videos, I really had a fun time putting together the... Uh, the $33,000 workstation. It's just fun to see how much, you know, you can really throw into a, a build. I think it's a lot of fun to do it. I'm sure you guys in the past have went to, like, Apple's website or went to Newegg or iBuyPower and built the most expensive computer possible. It's a lot of fun, trust me. Um, and in terms of actually building a computer or doing some sort of, like, DIY, the most fun I had recently was I put an SSD drive into a, uh, you know, a hard drive disk enclosure um, by taping it in and mounting it in with screws and I, uh, I hooked up a SATA to USB converter and I cut holes into the into the SATA, into the into the external drive holder and it works and I have an SSD external drive and it's really cool uh, that's my most favorite build quote unquote or mod that I've done recently um, let me read this one this guy says his name's duck duck goose um, with the addition of Twitch streaming to the next-gen consoles, do you think this will lead to oversaturation of online gaming videos? If so, do you think that this will have an effect on YouTubers' viewership or video quality? Well, this has kind of been the, the great debate of, you know, all the new people with PVRs and how now there's tons of people commentating and it's ruining the quality. I would say no. I would say, I mean, it's the, it's the age-old argument that competition breeds quality. The more competition, the better. Now that there's a lot more YouTubers out there, notice how all the YouTubers on top are upping their quality to compete with all these new guys. Notice how I up my quality, or I try to, as much as possible. Um, I spend more money on microphone equipment. I spend more time on making my videos more entertaining. Uh, I think competition always breeds better quality content. Of course, a few of the people are going to drop out of the race because they can't keep up, and that's sad. Um, but it's, you know, it's kind of survival of the fittest in a way. It's social Darwinism, so... I think it's a good thing, and I hope that uh, they continue to make it easier for people to make videos, because I think uh, the more content, the better, but I got to admit, sometimes I'm pretty much just sitting there in front of my computer for like 10 hours trying to keep up with like Sips' videos, or, or someone from the Yogscast, or Seamus, so uh, I, I guess it gets a little annoying when there's more people jumping into the game, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's pretty much my answer. Um, what's the first game you ever played? My first game I've really ever played is difficult to remember, but a few of the first games I played, 
I guess, you know, on the PC, I played like the Sesame Street game. Um, I vaguely remember what it was like. I can't describe it. It was kind of like, I remember you like built faces or something like that with like different eyeballs and things like that. I don't remember it. It was really weird, but I remember that. Um, I played uh, Minesweeper and Spider Solitaire a lot. That was fun. And then uh, as far as like later on when I had like a console, I played Doom. I played uh, this game called Area 51, which is like an arcade game. It's really fun. And I also played a little bit of uh, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, you know, all the classics. Twisted Metal, which was a really fun game. I love that game. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, what can we see here? What else we got here? Someone said, how, did it ta how long did it take you to get 10k subs? That's an interesting question. Because believe it or not, it took me about 3 years or maybe 4 to get 1k. And it took me 1 year to get 10k. So... The reason why I think that happened is because this thing called exponential growth. If you haven't learned about it in math, you will, and you're going to hate it. Um, but regardless, no, you you won't. I think it's just uh, it's pretty simple. I don't remember too much of it, but it's pretty simple. But yeah, basically what happens is when you have an audience of, say, 1,000 subscribers, you have a higher chance of those people uh, you know, giving you a shout-out or sharing it or liking it or commenting. And because of that, more people will be drawn to your videos. And once you have 10K it's even amplified by tenfold. So, uh, it's kind of interesting that, um, that, you know, I guess you go from like 1K after three years to 10K after one year to 100K after six months. So, uh, it's weird, but that's kind of how it works and that's how long it's been. Um, did you ever consider quitting e editing? I think I answered that. First quad feed, <laughs> question mark, by I'm WVW. I don't know what that's, that question is insinuating. I don't even remember my first quad feed. I've, I've hit so many, man. I'm such a pro. Not really, but still. Uh, let's see here. This guy says, I am a bow boy, SV. When did you realize that you and Nick were getting really big? And which time was the turning time for your upload schedule video things like first gameplay? But which time was the first turning time? First turning point for your... Um, I'm not sure what he's asking, but I think he's asking, when did I decide to create the videos I do now, like the, the schedule thing? Um, I'm not sure how to answer that. I guess, you know, when that channel revamp came out, it's like that. Um, I started all those gaming computer builds a while ago, and, uh, and I started the montage editing tutorial series, and I just said, you know, let's whip all these series together and make a, a schedule out of it. And me and Nick, well, Nick really, you know, Nick's not exactly like, 100% involved in my channel, um, but, you know, we both realized, I guess, that we were getting uh, a lot of subscriber count boosts, um, probably around when I got partnered with, like, TGN, and I think some people gave me shoutouts, um, and I was networking a lot, I mean, networking is a huge part of getting a lot of viewers, going to people and asking for shoutouts and saying you'll do a dual commentary with them, or working with them, and I had a lot of, like, tutorial guys I was working with who I said, hey, you know, box me and I'll box you and I'll link you and etc. And we all started doing that. So I guess that's kind of how, in a way, um, that happened. And uh, we realized it right around when I was at, like, 3 or 4K. Um, I'm not really sure to answer that, but I think that's a good answer, I guess. Uh, what did you think before YouTube started? Did you think it was going to be a hobby or for YouTube fame or what? Or did you have a YouTuber that you looked up to? That you... Okay, uh, I think I already answered this, but what did you think before you started YouTube? And did I have someone I looked up to for inspiration? When I first started the tech videos, I think the main people I looked up to were like John for Lakers, was a huge influence, and I actually used to be semi, uh, you know, in contact with him, and I used to, uh, I used to, you know, message him all the time. And uh, ask him to watch my videos, and he comments on them, and it helped me get a little bit of recognition. Um, and then once I started gaming, my main inspiration was probably, um, probably for editing Joe Handsome, and then Hotch. I think I already mentioned that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. I feel like these questions are repeating themselves. Um, how much longer do you think you'll be doing what you do now, as long as possible? Do you believe PC gaming is worth the extra money? Uh, it would cost you for a console, and do you believe PC gaming will grow in the coming years? Um, I feel like PC gaming is going to stay the same unless console makes a big mistake or PC gaming makes a big mistake. 
I feel like PC gaming rarely makes mistakes. It's usually the the companies that make the mistakes. Like for example, GTA 5 not being on PC. That's a huge mistake. Um, and I believe that yeah, the PC gaming versus console thing in terms of value. Um, someone made an argument once that was very smart, where he explained that you save money in the long run from PC because it lasts longer and it's cheaper to upgrade and the games are cheaper on on uh, on Steam and all that stuff. So I feel like uh, it's justified in price if you plan on gaming for the next 10 years and you plan on upgrading your PC slowly over 10 years. Um, so yeah, I feel like if you plan it out right, usually it won't even be that much more expensive. So I feel like, yeah, it's worth it. Um, <laughs> uh, Electrid... Electrio, Electri, Triad Leader 485 says, Do you think humans benefit from YouTube or get hurt in the long run? Uh, humans. That kind of goes back to the question of do humans benefit from technology? Now, I think YouTube's a great resource for, for everyone. Um, I don't, you know, like, you know, getting away from like our whole neck of the woods, the gaming neck of the woods. Um, I mean, YouTube's great for just looking up like how to videos. I, I mean, I learned how to tie my, my tie, a necktie, from YouTube. I learned how to um, build a computer from YouTube. I learned how to make YouTube videos from YouTube. I learned how to... Um, lots of things from YouTube. You get the point. Um, whenever something's not working properly, I look up a tutorial on YouTube. I had a huge virus on my computer the other day. I looked up how to uh, fix it on YouTube. So you get the point. Um, YouTube's really... It's like Google, except better. It's more demonstrative it's right in front of you so i think youtube is very beneficial um and i think that it's just like television in that it'll it'll provide entertainment and information for everyone so i don't think that there's any massive negatives from youtube um except for maybe wasting your time so yeah i think it's i think it's fine you'll we'll benefit from it uh what's your views on religion uh I, I really don't like getting into this too much but um i feel like my views aren't that controversial they're just kind of like you know I, I don't think that anyone possesses the power to say that, you know, something happened, you know, million, well, I guess they say 2,000 years ago, but millions of years ago, or, you know, so I just feel like, you know, why should I try to dictate to other people and to myself, you know, something that I have no ability to understand physically. Um, so basically, I'm an agnostic, if that makes sense. Um, and I, I rarely... I pretty much never question someone's religion. Um, it's the one thing about you know my personality and who I am. I feel like I feel like everyone should have a freedom to religion, and I feel like um, you know religion is a good thing at times. Religion could be good for people. It could help people get through hard times in their life. Whatever works for you. I think religion is just another method of life, a methodology of getting through life and experiencing life, and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But personally, I don't subscribe to any religion. So there you go. Uh, what else do we got here? <laughs> Someone just says, so that was UN un THPS. And he also says Facebook sucks, huh? And then why Machinima? So Facebook sucks, huh? You know, a lot of people complain about Facebook. A lot of people complain that it ruins lives and that it's awful. I I don't see any of that because really I just jump on Facebook every once in a while. see what people's doing. Pe people's doing? People are doing. And tell people what I'm up to, and that's it. That's you know, it doesn't really hurt. It doesn't affect my life that much. I mean, it's just another tool to communicate. It's like a it's like a telephone. Um, so I really don't know. I, I don't think it. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it sucks. I think that if you're talking about YouTube's, you know, owners, like you know, the people who run it, yeah, they suck. They're, they're you know, they're money whoring you know individuals. They want a lot of money. They're a big you know, they're a big corporation. Anyone who says Zuckerberg is an, is an innovator and a and a, well, he's an innovator, but anyone who says he's a visionary who cares about mankind and wants to move us forward, I, I find that hard to, uh, to agree with. I mean, the same thing with Steve Jobs. I mean, at the end of the day, they're, they're geniuses, sure, but we need to realize they're corporations at the end of the day, and the main thing they care about is what's in our pockets. So, um, sure, they suck. I, don't, I really don't have too much opinion on that. I really don't give a shit. I just use it as a tool, and that's that. Um, and then why Machinima? Well... I guess the reason why I switched from TGN to Machinima was mainly because uh, I decided that Machinima has a bigger name, and you know I think name you know the name brand or the um, the title is everything. So when you say to someone I'm partnered by Machinima, you have a better chance, for example, of getting into a convention, 
um, or being able to move ahead in line so you can get some content or record uh, some sort of game at a convention. I found that it helped me a lot at PAX, and it's actually helping me get into CES a lot. So that's why, for one, they're a big corporation, and one day, um, if you know, you, my YouTube channel isn't doing so well, maybe it's a, there's a possibility I could work for your Machinima's corporate, and maybe I could uh, become part of that, and that could be my job. I think Machinima has a good... Um, I guess uh, what's the word? They have a good, um, a good you know team. They have a good uh, way of doing things, and I just like that. Um, TGN is great, and you know, all the other communities are great. But I would say that Machinima is just my personal preference. I'm a big fan of Machinima's content that they put out, and uh, that's it. That's really all it is. Um, there's really not much more to that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, what do you use to record your screen? On my Mac, I use ScreenFlow, which is really good. Try it. If you haven't tried it, try ScreenFlow. It's amazing. Um, and on my PC, I use DX Story. DX Story is, is really nice. Very light, lightweight. Um, I find that Fraps slows down my frame rate too much. So, there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, are you very rich? Um, this is a question I get a lot. But I think I... Did I answer this already? I'm not sure if I answered this already. But uh, pretty much everything I own, in, in you know, on my if you watch my gaming setups, is bought on credit. As in, I went to a company or I went to a store, I took out a loan, and I and I showed them my credit, and they went, okay, you're pretty credible, and they lent me money, and I bought something, and now I'm paying it off month by month. I have a lot of bills every month, and the reason why I did this is because it's called investing. It's called investing into a business. If you invest money into a business, and you have to pay. Let's say uh, $200 a month, and you make from the business, let's say $1,000 a month, you're making a profit. So it's all about budgeting and planning out your funds. It's also good to build your credit. I'm building my credit as we speak because uh, down the road, maybe I want to get a house. And if I want to get a mortgage, it's good to have good credit. So basically, it's all bought on credit. I'm not rich. I'm far from rich. Um, and, you know, that's that's pretty much that. And I, I feel like... Uh, I feel like uh, a lot of people seem to instantly say, oh, this guy's rich or he won the lottery or his parents bought it for him. But honestly, when you think about it, everyone has, you know, equal value of what I have in my room in their car, for example. Some people have cars that are worth $50,000, but they make 30000 a year. <laughs> and the reason why they're able to do that is because they bought it on credit and they probably short their payments. They probably don't even pay for it and they're probably killing their credit. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much that i'm not i'm not rich do i want to be rich there's a, there's a deeper question do i ever want to be rich and if i was rich what would i do uh i don't really want to be rich i always say that I, I wish i could just live a comfortable life doing the things i love and uh just getting by day to day that's all i wish you know maybe i could support a family that's all i really ask for but if i ever did come into a lot of money um i would probably use it towards building um foundations that could last long uh, you know, not foundations and charitable, but although that's great, I, I would do that as well. But in terms of like businesses and 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 uh, foundation YouTube channels and and sort of I don't know those types of things that would last past my death because I feel like you know everything's going to end anyway, so why not build something that will last and that people will see for a long time? If that makes sense, I'm kind of just rambling at this point. Uh, what else we got here? I think we're getting to the end of the questions, which is good because I think the video is going to end soon. Uh, let's see. What do you plan on doing for your channel in the future? Um, from Frag Down Gaming. Also, what do you see coming to your channel, to channel, like success and stuff? Um, I already answered some of that, but uh, I guess in the future I just plan to do more. I want to do more edits, more real life films, things like that. I want to try to get more active in editing because I haven't done as many edits as I used to. Last year, I did 63 edits in the year, which means I did like, uh, I think I did like one per week or maybe more than that, like one and a half per week. Um, and this year, I've done like maybe like 30 edits. So I think I should step up my game a bit. Um, here we go. Do you have any siblings? Uh, yeah, I got two. Uh, who are your favorite YouTubers? Um, Hutch, I guess currently, right now, my, that's a good question, actually. I really... I re like my f number one favorite YouTuber currently, and he is the man. Is Sips? If you don't know who Sips is, look him up. He he's he's ge he's a genius in terms of his comedy, 
uh, the way he does his commentary, um, his humor is so good, um, and he's just an awesome, awesome person, um, he seems like a really cool guy, and, uh, I really want to meet him one day, that'd be awesome to meet Sips, um, I met the Yogs cast, which he's part of, the main two members, Lewis and Simon, I used to be huge fans of Lewis and Simon, but I gotta tell you, Sips is pretty much my number one Yogs cast member right now, and he is just great, I, I can't get enough of his videos, so, um, and other YouTubers, I mean, as far as editing goes, I really like Crunk Swagger. He's a f kind of friend of mine. Kind of, I say kind of friend because I, I used to talk to him a lot, but we don't talk as much because I don't edit as much. But uh, he has really good edits. I'll probably link him as well. And uh, yeah, so that's that's that. And uh, well, I guess I could say one more. I'll say one more YouTuber. We'll go with one more. Who else do I watch a lot? I should like. Here, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna. I'm on my iPad right now. You know what I'm liking a lot lately? Uh, there's this guy, Jared Polin, who does uh, really cool photography videos. And uh, I've been watching his videos a lot. So there you go. Those are the three YouTubers I really like right now. Uh, did you ever think that you were going to be a role model for so many people? You have inspired so many people to do what you do. Thanks for being there for me, Tony. And that's from I Seahawk, And I appreciate that. I appreciate the words. And, uh, I, you know... The whole role model thing really blew my mind one day. A lot of people, you know, started messaging me and going, you really inspired me to make videos, and, and etc. And it blew my mind because I remember sending those same exact messages to lots of YouTubers four or five years ago. And now people are sending me those exact messages that I used to send to people. So yeah, it blew my mind. I mean, I sat there for like a good hour just with my jaw open, just like insanely mesmerized by the fact that I'm actually like inspiring people to do YouTube, to actually get involved in this. Um, I think YouTube is great, and I hope that as many people as possible can get involved in it. And I think that it should. I hope it grows a lot, and that uh, and that it stays the way it is. Um, this whole YouTube community, uh, but that's probably not going to happen. But you know, enjoy it while we have it, as uh, as everyone says. You know, this typical saying. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. I, I just think it's awesome. And I hope that uh, everyone who is inspired by me um, does great things and links me them. Link me all of your videos if you're inspired by me and you, or, or anyone really. And you have content you want to show me. I love seeing new YouTubers and their content and the new things they have to bring. Bring something new to the community. That's another word of advice I'd have to say. Don't do what I do. Do something different. If you like my gaming computer builds, don't do that. I've seen people copying my gaming computer builds. I'm like, uh, alright, well... I mean, it's going to get a little boring, isn't it? Um, try to try to do something different, because even I'm thinking of a new type of video to do all the time, because these gaming computer builds are going to get a little old with time. Uh, what else we got here? Um, hmm, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, how long did it take you? Okay, we already saw that. Why did you call yourself Tony is Gaming? That's an interesting question. Uh, my name is actually not Tony. It's that's my nickname. People call me Tony, and uh, basically, I decided that I would call myself Tony on the internet because my my actual name is a lot harder to say, in my opinion. It's too many syllables, so I just went with Tony, and it works perfect. And then I decided to make a channel about gaming. So I said, okay, well, what can I call it? Can I call it Tony's Gaming Channel? Nah. I decided eventually that Tony is gaming sounds good. And I decided in the future if I did videos like Tony is talking, it could be like vlogs or something like that. So I thought it sounded good, basically. Um, and that's pretty much why I chose the name Tony is gaming. So I think that's a good question to end on, actually. We're going to end right there because I think we're coming to the end of this uh, gameplay. Uh, but if you guys enjoyed this Q&A thing, uh, leave questions below that I haven't answered already. And maybe I'll do some more in the future. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I am Tony. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it in the future, go ahead and subscribe and like. And I'll see you guys next time.